One of the first functions we're going to learn is the basic if function. So what this is, is pretty much what it means in English, which means if something happens, do this, otherwise that. So in this example, we've got a couple of bank accounts, and you'll see some of them are positive, and some of them are negative. So some we've got money in, some we're in overdraft. Our bank gives us 8% if we've got positive amounts, but they charge us 12% if we've got negative amounts. So if I gave this to you on a piece of paper, you'd easily do this. You'd say, that's positive, I'm going to use 8%. When you come here, you're going to say, that's negative, I'm going to use 12%. We now need to get Excel to do the same thing. And the function to use is the if function. So we're going to use our function wizard. I'm going to go find it, so I'm going to click on all. If I click once in here and then push I, it takes me all the way down to the R's, and you'll see it finds the if. And when we say OK, it brings this up. Now the if function is made up of three main components. First one is what is the logical test? So when you were looking here and you looked here and you said that's positive, how did you know that? So we need to tell Excel what to look for. So in this example, we're going to say, please Excel, when you're in that cell, look at that bank balance. So you'll see it's done B9. And we're going to say, are you bigger than zero? This is a very important step. A lot of mistakes happen because what people do is they click here, but then they don't tell Excel what to test. In your head, you've already done the bigger than zero, but you need to remember you need to tell Excel that. So this logical test normally has a number or cell reference, then either bigger than, less than, or equals to in the middle, and then another number or cell reference. So at the moment we've said, is the cell B9 bigger than zero? Then what Excel needs to know is what must it do if the value is true? So what must it return to you if the value is true? So we know that it needs to give us 8%. So we can either type in 8% or better click on where it must go get the information. If however the answer to this test is it's false, what must the answer be? It's going to be over here, 12%. So I can click on it. Now just because at the moment this is true, it's bigger than zero, you must realize that this can change. So you must tell Excel, here's the test. This is what must happen if it's true. This is what must happen if it's false. Before we click OK, when you were doing the copy paste, you would have realized that if we copy and paste this down, we'll be very careful because what's referring to B4 and B5, as we copy down, it's going to look elsewhere. So we need to tell it that no matter where we copy you, this B4 must always, sorry, this must always look at cell B4, the 8%. So I've highlighted, I'm going to push my F4 key and put dollar signs everywhere. Same with B5, put dollar signs everywhere. You can see here that the answers at the moment is your test is currently returning a true. If it's true, it should be 8%. If it's false, it should be 12%. The end answer is actually the 8%. And that's what it's going to look like given the formatting of these cells. So when I say OK, it gives me 8%. If I copy it down, you'll see that's now saying 12%. Why? Because it's saying, is B10 bigger than 0? There's B10. Clearly, it's not bigger than 0. It's less than 0. So it doesn't have to worry about what happens if it's true. It must look at what happens if it's false. It must go look at cell B5. 12% and that's how it gets to 12%. So this is a nice basic if function which you can use. If can become very complex and as you progress in your Excel knowledge you'll find you'll do some really amazing stuff with the if function.